Should private hospitals treat coronavirus patients or not? The Nigerian government seems to contradict itself. And comments made over the debt of Abakiari causes one to lose his job. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. The Health Minister, Osage Hanere, stated recently that the Federal Ministry of Health has not accredited any private hospital to treat COVID-19 patients. However, now the Lagos State Government also advised private hospitals not to treat coronavirus patients and said it accredited the hospital where Abakiri, the Chief of Staff to President Muhammad Buhari, died on Friday. Joining us to talk about this is a legal practitioner, Raymond Nkanebe. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you, Felicity, and good evening, Nigerians. Good evening. Yeah. And uh, via Skype, we're joined by Chima Onoka, a medical practitioner. A pleasure to have your company on the program. Thank you very much. All right. Let's, let's start with you. There is a controversy at the moment. Just a day before we heard that Abakiri has passed, um, the Minister of Health said there was no private um, organization accredited to manage COVID-19 cases in the country. And that's just coming days. The state government here in Lagos State said a hospital has been accredited, and that's where Abakiari was. What do you make of all of this? Can you hear me? All right. All right. So I should go ahead. Yes. So the the issue we have really is is um, a daunting one, and um, I think we need to remember that Nigerians are over two hundred million, and. Um, with what we have on our hands, the pandemic, it means that at this point, we need to activate every system that we have. The public facilities are not sufficient to manage 200 million people who are exposed um, in one way or the other. It means that the conversation is not really supposed to be about whether private facilities should or shouldn't. It's about activating every facility that we have in the country to make it capable of doing it. That's what the conversation should really be about, you know, that they need to be activated um, and not whether or not they should be involved. So the earlier we move to that conversation, the better for Nigeria. But there's a worrying um, um, concern among people that the, the secrecy around this amplified the conversation about it right now and of course the antecedents the comments that i've made uh, before uh, the the government on the one hand says that they have not accredited um a hospital and then on the other hand they are saying that they have now and that is just coming after Abakiari died what stopped them died rather what stopped them from announcing this before we had the case of Abakiari having a private treatment. So yes, granted, we have um, it's a public health problem and information should be out there. But you will agree with me as well that so many Nigerians are still keeping the information about even their own exposures to themselves. Um, and then governments are also trying to be defensive. And it's not just about what's happened you know, with the federal government or the Lagos state government. So in a situation like that, I, I, you know, I really think that um, we need to leave a lot of the noise to push as citizens and um, everybody in this space to push for the right things to do. So to be done, now that information wasn't there, but we should quickly move from that point to insist on the right things. And um, to start making people know even, you know, in terms of that there's not a time for such um, secrecy. This looks like a mistake. Getting government to admit there is a mistake or not is is one fa is one issue. But um, um, sticking to that point when time is of essence in in the responses 
you know, will be a bigger problem for us to get engaged in. So it's like we need to move forward. This is not the right way to do it. It's elicited a lot of public response. And um, we should quickly move on to get government to insist that government does what is right in terms of information. All right. Um, let's bring you in, uh, Raymond. Um, you've heard his yes, uh, submission, yes, but yes. I, I want to ask you um, another angle to this conversation that this, uh, the announcement by the legal state government was a, a damage control uh, mechanism. Uh, do you agree that is the case? And going forward, what should be the practice? Um, well, thank you very much. Um, I think you, you, you phrased the question in the, in the right manner. Being that um, the Lagos State government um, statement came immediately after Abakari's um, uh, 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 misfortune. And then when you weigh that statement against what the Minister of Health um, said as early as 24th or 20th, sometime in March, uh, uh, cautioning private hospitals not to undertake treatment of COVID-19 patients. And then you may want to see a sense of um, an afterthought trying to correct uh, that very um, um, uh, negative impression because immediately after who found out uh, when the uh, presidency uh, communicated that this man has died, I know before then that was in, it was a public knowledge that he has been admitted to a private center in hospital in Lagos. So Nigerians became worried, like, but we were told that this, you, you understand. So that gives the sense of trying to correct uh, a damage control um, uh, uh, sort of, but, but that is even collateral as um, the, the doctor has uh, observed over there. Um, then uh, in terms of whether what should be the way forward, uh, I want to disagree with the doctor uh, with, with respect. We, uh, he, he says that we're having, we are, we're over 200 million. Uh, of course, we know we, we are over 200 million, but um, uh, so far, by, uh, by special grace of God, our numbers are not up there yet. And we've heard from different state governments, and, and from what we've heard, seen in the media, they seem to be ramping up their facilities to uh, meet this situation in the event we have an expo exponential spread. So I don't think we've gotten to, the, to, to that point whereby we're left with no option but to activate our private um, hospitals. Particularly uh, when we are dealing with a very, um, a very uh, 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 delicate virus with a very uh, strained behavior. You understand? How many of these private hospitals uh, have trained infection disease specialists? The, the support staff who are going to handle nurses and all of that, they don't have the capacity. So if we're going to get to that, to the extent of involving our private hospitals, we have to do it with some bit of caution to make sure that any hospital that have to be um, accredited to take care of these issues will have all, uh, all it takes to handle. So we don't have a case where we now uh, have a, 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 a widespread of, of the case. So it must be guided by policy and some sense of orderliness. Not every hospital taking up patients as if you are treating headache or, or malaria. Okay, uh, Dr. Chima, um, the Lagos State chapter of the NMA um, earlier issued a statement that there is a worrying, um, a worry that they have that involving private hospitals might loosen the link to community transmission um, that we have. And that's um, what they're saying, that if, this, if the government allows that to happen, um, the little break we have now, the less community transmission we have now, might escalate um, much more than we can handle. What is your take on that? Why do you think that advice was ignored? Um, you see, the and um, thanks to the colleague on the on the station too. It's um, it's a certain where we are is is such that you know we can get and we can hear about figures, but remember that they took days to get those figures that were released yesterday to us. And those days, transmission is going on. So when you have somebody who has been confirmed positive, that's after several days. And remember that for a lot of reasons, our, tech, our testing capacity hasn't expanded. And um, I know the NCDC is working very, very hard to see that that happens. Um, but to plan based on the numbers of yesterday is actually planning for disaster. And so that's why those figures are not the best to use for planning. Your, the figures are a reflection of the past. And so linked to the question that we're talking about, 
people who are sick are going to look for where to get care and they are really their way with some cough with something going to a facility whether it's public or private they will go remember that when they go there the health worker has to find a way to decide whether this is you know what is it that is going on and then there are lots of risks that are attached to that so whether we like it or not they are going to meet and they are meeting doctors remember you know someone died they you know just died and it was because of you know, somebody coming to the private hospital and people are going to come. Nobody wears COVID-19 on his face when he's going to seek care. But what about the concern the that I... Now, you, you, you've still person. not addressed the concern that I raised, uh, that the NMA, your um, association, said that the, it might be the link that will expand uh, community uh, transmission because these private hospitals might not have the capacity to do what they say. This is an unknown virus, mind you. Yes. So that's the issue. People, they are private hospitals, and those private hospitals, are a lot of them are places where people are used to. That's why I say that at the beginning, that the conversation should not be, and, um, you know, um, the conversation should not be whether or not they engage in it, but how quickly we get them to be able to do what they should. And that is there are standards for treatment because the facilities that we're talking about can't even triage, can't handle the numbers that um, we're even talking about because community transmission is going on already. So you need the, you need the centers where people can be taken care of. We know the numbers of beds that we have there. Um, there are places where you know people will get taken care of. But then the people who are first coming to seek care, people who look for where to get health care, are first of all not labeled as COVID-19 infected. There are people who are coming with normal symptoms and people are transmitting. Somebody needs to be able to triage them and that is where everybody comes in, really. Somebody needs to say at the beginning, is this likely to be a case of COVID-19 infection or normal issues? And those people who, people who, it can be any one of us, can approach, people are going to the health facilities for several things a day. There are levels of care at every time. There are levels of care. With the population you have, people are going, even without knowing that they have symptoms, they are approaching their health facilities for other kinds of um, health care needs. All right, so doctor, that's why let's, everybody let's... has a role. Everybody has a role. It's role definition that needs to be put in place for the level of care that is needed. Not a yes or no thing, okay. but role definition. That's what is important. All right, I didn't want to just interrupt you so you can land uh, with your thoughts. Um, let me come back to you, Raymond, mm -hmm. because yeah. the, the essence of conversation like this is to explore all range sure, of thoughts sure, so we sure, can sure. you know, know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, the enemy in that statement that was issued, I want to um, quote something that they said. Okay. The state government may have started yielding to pressure from business concerns who might see this pandemic as a business opportunity rather than the public health emergency that is it. it is. End of quote. Do you think that there is anybody now that will be looking at this pandemic as a source of income as it is other than the desire to help, like the doctor is saying, alleviate the concerns of the people and kill as many people as possible. Yeah, thank you very much. I was going to uh, get there. You see, we cannot, um, I don't want to, with all due respect to the medical practitioners, um, private uh, hospitals are, are also businesses. As much as they render healthcare services, they are also businesses. And the, the core motive behind any business is to make some money. You understand? Now, I understand, I imagine some of these hospitals are positioning themselves to attract some high profile uh, uh, patients who they intend to uh, um, coop some money from, right? So that's why, even if the private hospital should be involved, the ultimate motive should not be to, to reap profit. And that's why, if you look at what happened in Ireland and, and even in England, 
when their cases began, be, uh, uh, started rising, they had to uh, enter into an understanding with the private hospitals. But then it was on the basis of they are going to be paid only for the cost of services they rendered, not any profit that they ought to have made from renting of services. You understand? So I understand the sentiment of enemy trying to make sure that this should not be a, uh, an opening for private hospitals to make a windfall. You understand? So uh, to that extent, I agree with what NMA is saying. If at all we get to the stage where we involve our private hospitals, the, the ultimate motive should not be for them to make money. And as the medical doctor began to say, uh, I, I agree that given the nature of this virus, where the symptoms is, uh, it, it, has, it has almost the same symptoms with every other uh, sickness until you get to the, uh, to the critical symptom like chronic coughing, right? I agree that private hospitals can have holding centers whereby they monitor a particular, your, your symptoms and get, get in contact with NCDC officials. It's okay, we have this patient, we think uh, yeah, yeah, he's a case of uh, COVID-19. We don't think we can handle him. We should, we should send him to you. So there should be that synergy between private hospitals and NCDC. They should not set out to go into treatment. They should monitor the situation in a holding facility and uh, 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 of course, they, they should have their clinical procedures to detect more of this thing. And if it's a case where uh, there's a high suspicion of COVID, they should always get across to, to NCDC to, to take up with that. They should not go into treatment. Okay, um, still talking about this, just to uh, take a lift from what you said, uh, Dr. Chima, um, there is yet to be a, uh, like a, a codified protocol for the treatment or containment of the virus. Am I right on this? Is there a national um, document already? Have we walked up to that stage where we know that this is how to treat a COVID-19 or contain a COVID-19 patient that can be adopted by these private organizations to help in the care of these patients? Yes, there is. And um, both um, Dr. Chikwe in NCDC and then the Minister of Health spoke about it You know, when it was released. It was published, it was made available. Okay. What is um, left or what is going on is the translation of that to actual practice. So bringing it down, decentralizing it to the units of care um, for people to know what to do. And um, that usually will start, of course, as, as usual, with those centers of care, the big centers of care, the teaching hospitals, and then the, the centers that are being set up in different places as um, you know, points of care. Um, so that document is there. It's now operationalizing it, you know, that is ongoing. That's usually a slower process, um, but there's been a lot of training that is ongoing. Different people, individuals, you know, organizations have been trying to use that. I mean, I know, um, and it was, you know, presented. I know NCDC also asked everybody, the Nigeria Medical Association, the medical and dental consultants, the the Christian Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria, look at the materials that we have, make use of it, try to help everybody to come up with an understanding of this protocol. That's been going on, that's available. And um, they are the things that we need to support and rapidly scale. Okay, I, I think we, we've gotten your, both your thoughts on the subject of the private hospital and all of that. Let's take a quick look on um, at rather uh, the new cases that we've had so far. Nigeria recorded the highest daily number since the outbreak of COVID-19 in February, 86 cases with Lagos having the chunk of it all. Um, does this mean the lockdown is not working? Let me speak to you, uh, Dr. Chima. Um, so just to r remind us that those numbers are not today's figures. They are t figures, re you know, reported, completed, but they are people who got infected some days back, um, if you put it that way. So there are more people okay. as of today. Um, so what to, what to, you know, think about now is that there's been the lockdown but we know the challenges, and that is really where we have issues to deal with. You know, especially the challenge of hunger. Hunger is the bigger fighter at this point. And then we know there are gaps, huge, significant gaps in it. That's where we really need a lot of work to be done. 
So lockdown does a number of things. Lockdown slows the process. Lockdown doesn't take it away. Lockdown really slows the process so that the health system can absorb. Because if one person comes today and spreads it to a thousand people in a gathering, you may have a thousand people, if everybody catches it, a thousand people in two weeks, so to say, you would have accumulated a thousand people. The health system can't handle that. If you have a lockdown, it spreads people. And so that rather than transmitting to that size, it, it trickles down, you know, one after the other. And then if it's certain, if the virus hasn't, you know, is, is somebody is, is with it, that somebody who is exposed, if it doesn't transmit it, after a few days, the, that virus dies off. So that's the purpose of the lockdown. Okay, doctor. So that oh. it spreads it. And so it's having a positive impact. Okay. But how long it lasts is a problem because hunger is biting citizens. Hunger is biting <laughs> citizens. Um, sure. Yes, that is an issue yes, with the lockdown. Yes. So um, what would you say to um, suggestions that there should be stricter measures um, to implement the lockdown? Since it seems, I mean, if it's really working, it's been over two weeks. Yet, on a daily basis, we have people being confirmed as positive uh, for COVID-19. Uh, well, um, speaking of the lockdown, and okay, first of all, the, the increased number w could be explained away by the, the uh, increased testing capacity. We remember a few days ago, the Lagos State government said they have started house-to-house uh, -house testing. So all of this could also have attributed, contributed to the numbers we saw yesterday uh, we are not we are not we are not uh, we are not under the illusion that these numbers will suddenly go away as long as we continue to test more persons uh, the chances that we have to get more numbers will be there uh, speaking of the lockdown uh, unfortunately hunger as we pointed out is even a more dreaded virus so somehow we'll find a way to um, uh, find a balance between economic that is palliative and also uh, cushioning the spread of uh, of this virus all right, Ramon, thank you very much for your thoughts so far. And Dr. Chima, um, any final thoughts before we wrap things up for this segment? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a call, really, to everybody. Um, to a certain, you know, something that is critical. In moments like this, let's remember that the doctors and nurses, pharmacists, laboratory scientists, healthcare support staff, drivers are in the front line, their families are at risk. Everybody who has a responsibility to, that anybody that has anything to do to support them should do so. Call their families, call their loved ones, encourage them, send a text message. And organizations like our you know, regulatory bodies, the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, the one for the nurses and all that. You know, while it is important to tell people to tell the health workers the rules and the regulations now. They need to step further, to go further than that. All right. To make, to do the kind of things that will make the health workers, to value them the more. Okay. By helping speak to the government and um, talk about the importance of making provision for the things that these people need to protect themselves. Thank you very I think much, I want Doctor. To that. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time on the program. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a quick break. And when we return, the name of Abba Kiari might still wield power, even if he has passed on. This is up for discussion after the break. We'll be right back.